Hey, welcome back to the Springs in the Desert podcast. I'm Jillian, your host, and I am joined today by founding Mama Anne. How are you today? Doing great, Jillian. Great to be with you. You also. I am really looking forward to this conversation today that we are going to have with a friend of our ministry who has a ministry of their own that is serving such a a beautiful need in the church. We have Bethany Miola with us today. How are you today, Bethany? I'm doing awesome. It is in the mid-70s here in Maryland, so we are enjoying a little taste of I guess preview of spring. I don't know. So I'm I'm doing great. <laughs> it's great to be with you ladies. That sounds wonderful because just last week it was 70 below zero in North Dakota. <laughs> Wind chill. Um so I love the thought of that. It just warms me thinking of that. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, So listeners, if you don't know Bethany, she is the co-founder together with her husband, Dr. Daniel Miola of Life-Giving Wounds, which is an international Catholic apostolate dedicated to giving voice to the pain of adult children of divorce, divorce or separation and helping them find transformational healing in Christ. Bethany is a graduate of the Pontifical John Paul II Institute for Studies on Marriage and the Family in Washington, D.C. Whoop, whoop. We love love those grads. (laughs) Yes, we do. Uh, And uh, she worked at the USCCB for seven years, which is so, so interesting. We'll have to have another conversation about that because that would be be interesting to hear some of your insights about all sorts of things. But uh, she and Dan have also experienced infertility in their marriage, and they received the great blessing of two girls through the gift of adoption. We're going to get to dive into that story a little bit, and we're going to make sure to um, put all of the the contacts for Bethany and where you can find more um, from her in the show notes for today. Uh, So Bethany, thank you so much for being here. I just want to give you some space to share a little bit about your story, wherever you would like to to start. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jillian. No, it's great to be with you, ladies. I mean, part of this is like, I feel like a couple of my worlds are colliding here, you know, because obviously I'm really excited to share with your audience about the ministry that my husband and I founded. Um, But also, yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, infertility is part of our life and our story. Um, so I'll just share a little bit about that first, because I know that you guys are doing such beautiful things with Springs in the Desert. Um, I wish you had existed, you know, back when I was first kind of experiencing what it meant to, to carry that cross of infertility. Um, so for us, our, a little bit of our story, um, Dan and I met at the JP2 Institute, um, and then we, you know, dated, got engaged, got married in 2011, um, and really had no, no inclination that infertility was going to be part of our story. Um, and so when we got married, we were very interested and open to having children right away, um, and it just did not happen. Um, so I remember even that first year, you know, we got married in May. So by the time we came around to my first Mother's Day as a married woman, um, sitting in church that day, I still remember just feeling like, whoa, just like walloped with the depth of sadness, you know, being there almost one year married. And they do like I was very familiar with the statistics of six months of focused NFP for, you know, um, doing trying to conceive. I mean, generally, we'll get pregnant. Here I was going on a year and we knew NFP. We <laughs> like to think we knew what we were doing. Um, so even then, it, it just kind of struck me that this was going to be a longer path or had already been a longer path than what I was expecting. So for us around, you know, year two, going on year two of marriage, a year two of infertility, um, we started to look into some medical options. I do feel fortunate living in the D.C. area. We had some NAPRO technology options available to us. Um, So did a lot of the things, a lot of the blood workups and the different tests and this and that. And the other thing, um, I'm sure you guys have talked a lot on your on your podcast and your ministry about what those licit options are. Um, but even though even though we had we you know we weren't doing anything immoral, um, it still was really difficult. You know, going through all the medical stuff, figuring out what do we want to do, um, the physical pain of those procedures, the timing, kind of just the somewhat all consuming nature of that um, became really difficult. And we, so we did medical stuff. We pursued that for about two years. Um, I had two surgeries done during that time, kind of reached a point where our doctor sat us down after that second surgery and said, I, I don't know why you're not able to get pregnant. Um, it's, I don't know. So we're, we're in that category of unexplained infertility. Um, to this day, really do not have a clear reason. None of the, the tests showed anything that would really give an indication of like why we were not getting pregnant. Um, and that was, that was a lot to process through. 
Um, it was around that point that our hearts were starting to think about adoption. Um, it had always kind of been in the back of our mind, um, knowing, okay, maybe this is something we want to pursue. But certainly we wanted to give the space and time to grieve that loss of not being able to conceive in our marriage. Um, so gosh, <laughs> I could go, yeah, this is, yeah, over, we're, we've been married for 12 years now. So this is a, a 12 year experience. Um, but around year two, when we kind of felt like our medical options were becoming very limited, we decided to discern adoption more fully. And that took a while too. It wasn't until, um, you know, just to condense a really long story short, it took about four years from when we first started thinking about adoption to go through the whole process to get approved. And our daughter, Zelly, was born when we had been married about six years. Um, so she's six and a half going on seven now. Um, and our daughter, Grace, was born four years ago. So both of them adopted domestically. Um, we're actually currently seeking to adopt again. So this is very much the adoption piece has become a really big part of our, our lives and our family, obviously. Um, you know, so we're, you know, we are an infertile couple. I don't know if the Lord, it could be something miraculous happened. We have no idea. It's not something that we're pursuing right now in any sustained way. Um, but yeah, so I'm just, I'm thrilled to talk with you ladies because it's very much, it's been a really uh, formative experience in our lives and our marriage. Absolutely having that unexpected um, cross to carry and just figure out how to, how to navigate that in our lives as, as Catholics. Bethany, it's so interesting that you just described it as a formative experience. I think those of us certainly who are on the Springs in the Desert team have, have grown to see this cross as formative it's really hard to see it that way, <laughs> you know, when you're at the beginning and when, you know, when you're kind of in the thick of it, yeah, but definitely. Um, it's so interesting, you know, Jillian mentioned that both you and Dan are grads of the JP2 Institute. Of course, uh, many of our listeners know by now that I am as well. Kimberly, who's our co-founder is also a graduate of the JP2. And just if you could speak to that a little bit, and, and this will be kind of segueing, I think also into, you know, talking about life-giving wounds and that ministry, it is, um, I guess, a little shock to the system when you go through the formation that we received in marriage and family and just the beauty of what the church says about marriage and family, and then to be confronted with a cross like infertility or you know, even divorce within your own family of origin. So I I don't know. I just wonder if you have any thoughts on that, like how how you go through this formation and then that formation sort of clashes with real life. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really good um, topic to explore. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is I feel like there's a lot of concepts that I really had purified and deepened in my own heart through the experience of infertility. Um, you know, a big one would be what does it mean that children are a gift? Um, I had a much more, I think, very, I don't, I don't know if you'd say superficial, but just kind of not as deep a sense as when you go through infertility and you're really struck with like, wow, like, what does it mean that children are a gift? Well, first of all, it means that no one is owed a child. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm a good Catholic. And so I'm going to get to have all the children that I want to have. It's not a prize. It's not a badge of honor. You know, it truly is a gift to receive. And that also means that sometimes that gift is not given for mysterious reasons. Right. So for me, kind of, I had that, I had, I kind of thought I knew what children as a gift meant from our education and then going through infertility, it's gotten just so much, so much deeper through that. Um, and then I would say also the concept of fruitfulness. Um, what does it mean that marriage is fruitful? I think my, if I, you know, my pre-married self would have explained it, I may have had hopefully a little bit of depth. I mean, obviously, JP, JP2 Institute <laughs> formed my thinking in some beautiful ways. Yeah. Um, but coming to realize the the depth of the fruitfulness of marriage and that it often is expressed through that fruitfulness of having children, um, but often it is not. And, you know, the bond as the first fruit of marriage and the gift that the couple and their family is to the world, whether or not children are given. So I, I look back with some gratitude that those those truths have been deepened in that way. Um, you know, I think any any sort of suffering, you never wish for it. You never wish it on anyone. Um, but there is, 
we we got to take what what the Lord is giving us through those experiences, um, and as a way to say, okay, this is not completely devoid of, devoid of meaning. There is something here that the Lord has to offer, even in the the worst moments, and not in like a saccharine, like silver lining way. There's, I think, there's something a lot more deep that our faith has to offer there in the midst of those sufferings. Yeah, definitely. I really a lot resonated me with me of what you just said and I think uh, especially that piece about fruitfulness in marriage is something that at Springs we try to have a lot of conversations about because as you say you know typically that that is expressed through the gift of children but that's not the only way right that's our the fruitfulness in marriage is not exclusive to that. And I I am guessing uh, that one of the, you know, a source of fruitfulness of your marriage is, is Life-Giving Wounds, the ministry that you and your husband uh, co-founded. So I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit about your ministry and maybe like, yeah, what that was like uh, for you and your husband to, to found this ministry together. Yeah, sure. Um, so yes, we we founded it together with the co-founders. Um, a lot of it kind of so we're as you mentioned in the bio, the work that we're doing is helping anyone who comes from a broken home. So their parents are divorced, they're separated, they were never together. All of those scenarios, um, helping them uh, find community, find understanding, encouragement for the crosses that that experience brings. Um, a lot of the the reason that we founded it, a lot of it has to do with my husband being an adult child of divorce. That's his experience. Um, thanks be to God, he was blessed with some very crucial priests and mentors throughout his life to help him with his own healing journey. Uh, but we both kind of realized at the JP2 Institute, just looking around and seeing that there was not a lot that the church as kind of an institutional church was offering to people coming from broken homes, um, despite the fact that that's now an experience that over half of all American adults share together. I mean, it's a it's a huge number of people um, that have this experience of not having their their parents together. So absolutely, our our shared work in that, we definitely see that as a, a fruitfulness of our marriage, getting to do that together. Um, you know, does it come without its difficulties? Anybody who works with their spouse, <laughs> there's, there's ups and downs, there's pros and cons. Um, but getting to, yeah, getting to witness to, get, getting to witness our own marriage while doing our ministry has been beautiful to see because we work with a lot of young adults in particular who coming from broken homes have a lot of questions, a lot of fears about marriage, about whether marriage can last. Um, and I am certainly not holding us up as a perfect example. <laughs> we have a lot, a lot of areas that we can grow, um, but it has been beautiful to, at least in our own lives, give that day in and day out witness that marriage can last. Um, we value that too, all the the mentors that we've had um, that have stuck it out. I mean, that is incredibly valuable. Um, and then, it, you know, it really connects with our experience of infertility too. And actually one of the talks that Dan and I will give, we kind of reflect on like these experiences and what they have to do with each other. Um, and Dan in particular just speaks so beautifully about how coming from a broken home and then going through infertility, one thing that he reflects on is just the realization of how powerful it is that we had each other, that we were stable, that we we had that family that he didn't have for his childhood. Um, and even in those those years where we didn't know whether we were going to be able to be parents at some point, um, even having the home together that we had was a blessing. There was something really good and beautiful about that, that he could realize more from not having it as a, as a child. Um, so there's just, it, it, I mean, everybody's life has those kind of mysterious things that the Lord is showing to, to them. Um, and that's one thing for us that really deepened our awareness that this is a really good and beautiful thing to have our marriage. Um, and we would love to be parents. And, but even if that doesn't happen, this is still really good. I love what you just said about that you had each other, that you two are a family. We really try to affirm that at Springs, that you can be a family of two and you are a yes, family absolutely. Uh, the day you're married and that there is so, yeah, there's so, um, there's probably a whole episode we could do just about about that about yeah being a family of two and 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 that stability that you said that you know to to lean on each other and to uh, especially during difficult times at all times but in difficult times to realize that 
And I'm sure, yeah, from that perspective of life-giving wounds and that experience of your husband to have, to have that, um, yeah, that, that insight to that, just cherishing um, that together, I think is just a really beautiful thing that I, I want to reflect on more. Um, one of the really exciting things about uh not just life-giving wounds, but for you and and your husband, is that you have a new book out. We do, and yes. <laughs> that is, first of all, congratulations. That Thank is you. so yes. I do have show and tell. I'll hold it up oh, for anyone awesome, watching awesome. it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry oh, for anybody beautiful. who's just listening to this. <laughs> There's a picture of Jesus on the cover. <laughs> so, picture that, <laughs> which is the best kind of image on a cover. <laughs> I love that. Um, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how the book came about, you know, what that's like, I, as you say, you know, working with your spouse, I'm sure is so beautiful. And there's also, I'm sure challenges that come with that. Um, but to have not, I mean, just from an outside perspective to have, even for Anne, you know, our founder to have this, yes, that you, you say yes. And that God really does like, he just blossoms just from this, the sea that you have given him, he blossoms and he just keeps going and going and going and, and bringing more fruit from that. So could you talk a little bit about um, where the book kind of, where that came from and, and what that was like for you? Sure. Yeah. So we kind of, we, we started, th- well, we had founded Life Giving Wounds in 2018 and then became a nonprofit in 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. Great time to do a bunch of paperwork, right? <laughs> um, and then it's, it's really grown, you know, since there. And we found different chapters throughout the country and now in Canada, hence why we can say we're international. Um, we have about, we're going to have about 20 chapters total by the end of the year. And it, at a certain point, um, it kind of dawned on us that we, we wanted to have something that, like, in a book form that someone could pick up who's an adult child of divorce or who's a, a Catholic leader or who just loves someone who comes from that background um, and have something kind of an evergreen resource, you know, because a lot of, of what we do in our ministry, similar to you guys, is retreats and support groups, which we, we will continue doing. Um, and so much fruit comes from those. But those are more, you know, one-off experiences, hopefully with follow-up. Um, but we wanted something that anybody could pick up at any point that really distilled what we had learned at the JP2 Institute, what we had learned in our own lives, what we had learned by accompanying by this point, uh, over a thousand people have gone through life giving wounds and just the, the privilege, as I'm sure you guys know, like the privilege of getting to hear other people's stories of walking with them. Um, that's a tremendous honor. And a lot of the people that, that we've been blessed to know, we share their stories, you know, with their permission in the book. Um, and, and so we wanted to bring all of that together. And we just saw there was there's a need, you know, there's a gap. There haven't been as many books about this topic. Um, thankfully, I feel like that is changing and not just through what we're doing, but other places. I think there's there's more conversation about the wounds caused from broken homes and the healing that's needed there. Um but yeah, it was, but it was a, it was a process. It took a, maybe start to finish like two and a half years total. It's a ballpark. I mean, a lot of this was just squeezing it in on the margins of like trying to launch this ministry and living our family life. Um, so yeah, a lot, a lot of early mornings, my place to go is Panera um, in the early morning hour. <laughs> and then Dan's more of a night owl. So we would kind of just squeeze in the time and flesh it out and write it and rewrite it and all the work that went into it. It definitely, it absolutely was a labor of love. Um, it was, <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's amazing just to have it finished. It's really nice to have it done. <laughs> um, and then exciting to be able to share it out with people. And we're just hoping that it will reach the people that need to have that encouragement and advice and, you know, speaking, um, to their hearts. One of the things, Bethany, that I love about your ministry is that it is obviously reaching into a, a deep wound that many, many people um, are feeling, but that it's also just so encouraging uh, uh, of marriage. Um, you know, especially I think if someone comes from either a broken home or from you know, maybe their parents had a lot of difficulty. I mean, my parents were married for 52 years until my mom passed away. And, um, you know, it was often really rough and, and they're, they were 
They're beautiful parents, but some really tough times in our childhood for my brother and I. And, you know, in the last year of my mom's life, there was a lot of healing with her and my dad, which was a real grace. Yeah, but that, you know, but that's something that weighs on you. And then you take that into your marriage, right? Right. Because then you think like, oh my gosh, am I going to repeat the bad patterns? Am I going to overcorrect in some way? Um, And so what I love about your ministry is that, yes, it's reaching into these deep wounds, but even just from what you shared about you and Dan, like, you know, for whatever you bring into this marriage, like you have committed to yourselves that like, okay, now this is our marriage. It's not our parents' marriage. It's not somebody else's marriage. And we are going to lean on each other. And I know because the two of you are so prayerful, you lean on each other and then lean on God together. And I think that's such an important message for our people in our community you know, whether or not you come from a broken home, I mean, we all bring baggage from our family of origin, whatever that might be. Um, But just, you know, again, that reaffirmation that like, it is possible to live a strong and committed and, you know, holy and imperfectly happy marriage, even um, when you you know, have these different crosses that come up. So, I mean, I just want to encourage all of our listeners, you know, whatever your situation to go and visit life giving wounds and their ministry. And you have a lot of great resources that I think everybody can kind of benefit from just for encouragement in, in their marriages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely right. And I mean, and I would just love all the the listeners, all those who are struggling with infertility, to know what a blessing your marriages are. And I would say, somewhat, you know, speaking on behalf of our Life Giving Moons community and those who were not blessed to see a stable, happy, holy marriage growing up, um, it is no small thing to have a lasting marriage and to do our best to receive those graces for our marriages to be beautiful. Um, yeah, we talk in our book somewhat about what we call the superpower of adult children of divorce who are married. Um, cause a lot of times if, you know, people from broken homes can have a bit of an inferior inferiority complex or feel like I have all this baggage, like who is going to want this? Who's going to want to take on this mess? What do I have to offer? And yes, there's a lot of healing that, as you said, all of us, and then in particular ways, adult children of divorce are, are in need of. Um, but on the flip side, there's just some beautiful witnesses of folks that come from broken homes and because of that are so much more intentional about their marriages, um, have not, want nothing to do with divorce. It's not even on the table, you know, in a way that those from intact homes may take for granted somewhat. Uh, but you can't. <laughs> if you're from a broken home, like that is not something that you take for granted. Um, so I just want to affirm anyone listening who has that background, um, that not only is a, a strong, stable marriage, any any strong, stable marriage, a great witness, but especially for those who are not transmitting those wounds further, but are saying like, Lord, help this stop with me. Um, help my marriage be different than what I received growing up. And that is completely possible. Thanks be to God. I mean, he is a God of healing and abundance and wants just an abundant, joyful life um, for all of us in the midst of whatever crosses that we're carrying. Well, Sunny, thank you so much that I'm going to, when I re-listen to this, I'm going to have to write that last phrase down and like put it on a sticky note somewhere on a mirror that, yeah, that God, he is, he's a God of healing and, and abundance that he does want joy and for us to live a life full, um, because he has so much in store for us. And so I, I appreciate just you sharing your story and about Life Giving Wounds. We'll make sure, like I said, to uh, link uh, Life Giving Wounds, your website, and um, we'll put your um, contact information in our show notes today, as well as a link to get your book. Um, we're just so grateful to, to have you. Uh, so thank you uh, for being here today. Yeah. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you, Anne. And I am so grateful for you all too. And yeah, Springs in the Desert and Springs of Love are just doing such beautiful work. So keep it up. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time on the podcast.